morning. I'm Sarah Green. This is Sarah Kate, and we're the vestry people of the day today. We're glad to be with you, and a special welcome if you are visiting us this morning. If you could please fill out this card that Sarah Kate has in the pew in front of you and give it to our greeters on the other side of this wall so we can get to know you and reach out to you later this week. We'd really appreciate that. There are several announcements in the bulletin. If you'll please take a look at all of them and pay a special attention to just a few. The seniors of St. David's are hosting a Cinco de Mayo luncheon on Uno de Mayo. This is the last week to register for that. The men's club is hosting a dinner on Sunday, April 21st. All of the men of the parish are invited to that and you can also RSVP to that on the church website. And finally, we're hosting Family Promise rotational shelter starting next Sunday. We do need a few more volunteers to make that the best experience possible for those families. So if you could please use the link on the website to sign up for that if you feel called to do so, we'd appreciate it. Thank you again for being here this morning and we hope you have a meaningful worship service.
Good morning, everyone. Our service of Holy Eucharist will continue on the inside cover of your bulletin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Please join me in praying this prayer as we prepare our hearts for worship today. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter saw the astonishment of those who had seen the lame man healed, he addressed the people. You Israelites, Why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him but you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. 
The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. While the disciples were telling how they had seen Jesus risen from the dead, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Now, before I begin, I wanted to clear up a few things, break down some myths and misconceptions you might have about having a nun at your church this morning. First one, big one, not Roman Catholic. Just want to clear that up. Most people think only nuns are Roman Catholic, but they are not. There's Episcopal nuns. I'm Episcopalian like you. A second myth is that I do not carry a ruler. I get that very often. Don't have one, not packing a ruler. So just want you to know that's another myth that it's not true. I am also not a governess like Maria and the Sound of Music. I will not call on the choir to lead do re mi at any point of the service. Although I do feel like Taylor Swift leading the heiress tour with this mouthpiece, but won't leave that either. Sorry to prank you, Remington. So, another myth is that all nuns are old. Not true. I'm not even the youngest in my community. And last but not least, I am not stern and bitter and hardened by life as is the case when some people share with me their experience of nuns. I'm actually quite joyful. And being joyful is part of our gospel lesson today, when the resurrected Jesus appeared and stood among his friends, and they were filled with joy. So let me begin by saying what a particular joy it is to be with you all this morning and to be invited here to preach by Remington. And thanks to Gloria, who connected me with you all and invited me to be part of the DOK yesterday. Not only is our gospel full of joy, it's full of the invitation of renewed intimacy of community. The core message from Jesus can be summarized with four sentences. Look at me and see me. Touch me 
eat with me and understand me. We are discovering that this resurrected Jesus is someone wanting desperately to be completely and thoroughly known. And the first way he does this is through a meal. Give me something to eat, he says. And in that act, they begin to learn more and more about who he is. When people hear the word ministry, they may think of preaching, visiting the sick, helping the poor, or any number of ideas of what it means to serve. While all of these acts are necessary and good, ministry can also take place in quiet, behind the scenes, ordinary ways. It can happen over a meal, when people who don't know each other, or don't know each other that well, gather together just to eat. Ministry can happen one meal at a time. Jesus reveals to us that the sharing of food can be a sacred act. At our convent in Sewanee, We begin our meal in the chapel at the Eucharist and continue it in the dining room with breakfast after the service. Both places are opportunities for holy togetherness where all are welcome. And isn't that what we're promised in the future? At the heavenly banquet of feasting and sharing and community and fellowship over food. A few verses before our gospel lesson today, we heard the story of the road to Emmaus with Jesus and the two disciples. It was precisely at the time of the meal, at the breaking of the bread, that the presence of Jesus was finally recognized. The connection between meal sharing and divine fellowship is unmistakable. The resurrected life shatters the illusions we have of how God works and where we can find God. It means we're part of a new reality, a divine reality, a reality that begins with eating broiled fish with friends. Are we aware of the holiness in all of these things? Are we aware of the sacredness of being invited to this meal? Our community in Sewanee follows the rule of St. Benedict. Benedict was a monk who lived in Italy in the 6th century. He wrote a short rule, like an instruction manual for the religious life, for his monks. And this rule has survived and thrived for over 1,500 years. In one part of his rule, he writes that the monk in charge of the kitchen is to regard all the utensils and goods of the monastery as sacred vessels of the altar. What this means is that the common goods of the community, like the fork and the knife, are to be treated with just as much reverence as the chalice on the altar. This is because Benedict believed that the divine presence was everywhere. And that's what the resurrection is all about. No longer is there a division between sacred and secular, things of God and things of the world. All of creation is a reflection of the image of God. It's what our collect today is all about. We prayed that God would open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming work. It's a prayer that's in the theme of Benedict. It captures what Jesus is telling, asking, and giving his disciples in our gospel today, that they and we might understand him and the work that he's doing. It's a whole new outlook for how to envision our relationship with God, with ourselves, with each other, and with all of creation. At the core of our ministry is Benedictine hospitality. Benedict wrote that all guests who present themselves are to be welcomed as Christ, and Christ is to be adored because he is indeed welcomed in them. The hymn we sang as part of the processional this morning, 
talks about how Christ is no longer bound in human form. It's reflected in the lives of each other. And in welcoming the stranger to our chapel and our dining room and this church here, we're welcoming Christ. We regularly greet newcomers to our chapel for services. We have four services a day that are all open to the public. And we make new friends when people come over for tours of our grounds and convent. We have an internship program for college students and recent college graduates who live alongside us either for a summer or for a gap year. They work in our organic garden, participate in our chapel services, study the rule of St. Benedict, and spend intentional time practicing a life of Benedictine balance. This rhythm has been known through the ages as ora et labora, Latin for prayer and work. Benedict believed that God speaks to us not just through prayer and time here in chapel, but through our work, through being outside in nature, through silence, through study, and through each other. I can't begin to tell you how transformational this has been for us as sisters and for our interns. We see this pattern of how what we do impacts our lives through the example of the disciples as well. The disciples are witnesses of Jesus, not just because of what they know about him, but because of how their lives have changed through their relationship with him. To witness to something means not only to have knowledge of an event, but also to change from personal observation or experience. What does your life witness to who you are becoming? When many people hear the word formation, they think of Christian formation. But formation actually just comes along from being human. Every day, how we spend our time forms us, both our work time and our rest time, what we read, the kind of news we watch, the kind of social media we spend time on, the people we interact with, where we go for fun, for comfort, for rest, it all forms us. Each of us has a, day we spend, has a way we spend our days, which leads us to how we spend our lives. We have all consciously or unconsciously created rhythms by which we live that shape us. So what's forming you? Are you aware of how you are being formed? Without being formed in a faith tradition, it's easy for us to be formed by the news, by advertisements, by social media that can actually deceive us about who we are and what our priorities should be. They do this by trying to convince us that we can control our lives. But pandemics have a way of shattering this illusion of control. People realize that they are not in control of their health or their job security or their finances. They discover that the things they once thought were so important in life really didn't matter that much anymore. Their desire to look like they had their life all together and to appear confident and successful wasn't possible when the world was falling apart. We crave control as a way to manage our fear, to cope with anxiety, to minimize suffering. But pandemics teach us, whether we like it or not, about our powerlessness, and that can be terrifying. It was a radical act when Jesus chose to take on our powerlessness by becoming human in solidarity with us. We know that one of the names of Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. In Christ's suffering and death, he identifies with us yet again with our woundedness. The pain of humanity became the pain of God. The woundedness of Jesus is revealed to his disciples in his hands, in his feet, and in his side. They are visible and physical reminders that Jesus took on our flesh, our suffering, and our powerlessness. 
took them with him to the grave, and carried them with him in the resurrection. We must never forget that all of our lives are a participation in the life and death and resurrection of Christ. It's all part of the eternal and redeeming love of God. One of my favorite hymns is one that we sing in Advent, but it's relevant for our Easter season. In the hymn, Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending, there's a line that's easily overlooked that goes, With what rapture gaze we on his glorious scars. His glorious scars. In today's gospel, Jesus invites his friend not only to gaze on them, but to touch them, to touch these holy scars. Isn't it interesting that our resurrected Lord didn't come back with the body fully healed, untouched and unscarred by life? Normally people want to hide their scars, not talk about them, make sure no one ever sees them. They may signify trauma or shame or injury. They may bring up memories that people don't want to talk about. But Jesus embraces his wounds. There is no denial. There is no shame. He reveals them to be an identity marker of himself. He doesn't shy away from being vulnerable. The word vulnerable comes from the Latin word vulnus, which means wound. Being vulnerable means being capable of being wounded. We worship a God who is able to be wounded. And instead of hiding his scars, Jesus tells his friends, see them, look at them, touch me, and know me. His wounds make him human. Wounded people make the best healers because they know what it means to be wounded. In his book, The Wounded Healer, Henry Nouwen presented a model for ministry that identifies with the woundedness of humanity. Instead of being sources of inadequacy, our scars can become the ways in which God's healing grace can occur. Our wounds can become sources of healing for others. Now one says that we can make our deepest connections with God and others through the shared experience of suffering, and actually writes that if our suffering is not shared, we cannot be transformed. Now one wrote, there is a great illusion to think that someone can be led out of the desert by someone who has never been there. Who can take away suffering without entering into it. Every Christian is constantly invited to overcome his neighbor's fear by entering it into it with him, and to find in the fellowship of suffering the way to freedom. Our service will not be perceived as authentic unless it comes from a heart wounded by the suffering about which we speak. Thus nothing can be written about ministry without a deeper understanding of the ways in which ministers can make their own wounds available as a source of healing. I believe that now and is very accurate and that his wisdom is needed now more than ever in a world that's with ever increasing polarizations and divisions. When we forget our common humanity and shared suffering, we can see people as the other and forget that we had any similarities with them. Maybe the most important thing we bring to each other is not our successes and our joys, but our wounds and our scars. Maybe we can find healing when we realize and admit that we were never meant to have perfect, painless lives or always appear that we have it together. Maybe an invitation to gather for a meal is the perfect place to share our wounds with each other and to reveal to others that these scars are part of us, to let others know about them so we can understand each other better. In the breaking of the bread, may we be filled with joy and be transformed 
by the healing that comes from experiencing our brokenness together. May we know the intimate and redeeming love of the one who was broken for us. Standing together, let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed on page four in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are form four, and you can find them on page five in your bulletin. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may, may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
I invite you now to add your own prayers of intercession or thanksgiving, either silently or aloud. For Gavin and Katie. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you all again, and good morning one more time. It is great to be with you today. Just a couple of quick words of hospitality and welcome. Uh, first, to those of you who are joining us for the first time today, either online or in person, we're delighted that you are here to share in this great community and, and all the gifts that we get to share in on a Sunday morning and otherwise. If you are online, uh, please maybe put a note in the chat and let people know that you are there and also see those links that might be in the chat, especially to our website, stdavidchurch.org, where you can click the I'm new here button and uh, fill out a, a welcome form if you would like to. Let us know that you are there. Uh, for those of you who might be our guests today in the pews, you have a welcome card in front of you and we'd love for you to fill that out and leave it with us. We'd also love for you to visit the welcome desk on the other side of this wall where you'll run into greeters. They have yellow ribbons on their name tags and would be happy to answer questions or otherwise provide some hospitality if you need that. Uh, another quick word of welcome and hospitality is uh, a welcome and a thank you to Sister Hannah for sharing her gifts with us today in ministry. been a, a real gift the entire weekend with the Daughters of the King yesterday, and just in the event that you are a woman in this parish, you've not heard of the Daughters of the King before, that's a semi-monastic community, so where uh, this, the Sisters of St. Mary are living this full rule of life, and many of them together in one particular location. Here we have a rule of life for our daughters as well. They are committed to a particular kind of service and prayer and evangelism and gather together in prayer with regularity. Uh, and you're invited to participate in that if you discern a call to be a part of that community. So if you have any questions about it, let me know. I don't have the answers, but I know who does, and I'll send you to one of the sisters who can help you understand a little bit more about that. Uh, Sister Hannah was with us as well at the forum, which we did as Ask a Nun today, though that is in the past, I bet you anything, if you have questions about the monastic communities of the Episcopal Church, in particular the community of St. Mary, you can be in touch with her, and I would encourage you to visit the table that she has set up in the hallway where you can learn a little bit more as well, and uh, maybe take away a lovely gift uh, as well. Uh, just one other word of hospitality and welcome, and then we'll turn to 
our offertory and prepare the altar. We're going to have communion in a moment, the continuation of the meal that Jesus shared with his disciples in a place like Emmaus that we heard about in our readings today. If you would like to encounter the risen Christ in bread and wine, uh, we really believe this is the reliable way that Jesus keeps on showing up in our lives. And so please take advantage of that opportunity if you want to. The ushers are going to guide you forward to the altar rail at the right time where you can stand or kneel. There are some additional customs that we have. Those are detailed in italics in the margins of your bulletin. Take a look at those. But if you get up here and have any questions, feel free to just ask, and we'd be happy to provide whatever guidance we can. Now, friends, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
continue now with the great thanksgiving on page six in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people. And your word is spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the blessed Mary, blessed David, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Turning now to page nine in your bulletin, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you today and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.